Well, good morning. So nice to see you this morning. <clears throat> well, I just had one of those cough drops with a center in it. You know, kind of like a. a with, they a, all have centers in. Don't well, they? you know, the gooey stuff. It's like a, 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 a like a pie cough drop. <laughs> a menthol I mean? pie. Yeah, yeah. It's a okay. menthol pie cough drop. It was very nice. Anyway, <laughs> let's stand and sing our first song. Uh, that's enough about me. Uh, there's power. No, in the please blood. go on. Sunday mornings when I'm on my exercise bike, I like Whoa, to watch. Whoa, I didn't want all those details. Just <laughs> okay. I like to watch uh, uh, Jimmy Swaggart's uh, worship team. And they were all, they were doing this song, kind of like that song, and everybody was raising their hands and jumping around and running around the room, and he said, you may be seated if you're able. Yeah, if you're able, you may be seated. And yeah, no one sat down. They were still waving their hands, and they just Our kept goal is to get song. it like that in here by the end of the service. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my. <laughs> um, I do have a few announcements for you. Uh, first of all, good morning. It is nice to see you. I'm hoping that you are all glad you got up and came out to church. 
It was so beautiful this morning coming out this road. All the trees are changing. There was frost on the ground, actually, believe it or not, this morning when I came out. And the sun feels good. It's just a perfect fall day. Um, good day to be here to worship. Um, I have an announcement about CrossNet. So uh, our missions team has put this letter, and I'll put it in the back after I'm done reading it today. But uh, this letter is for all of you. I'm just going to read it to you what's going on. Dear Mount Zion, CrossNet Ministries has asked us to assist them with a Thanksgiving food drive. We are one of two churches who will be purchasing ingredients to put together 120 boxes to feed 120 families for Thanksgiving. The other church is providing 120 turkeys, stuffing, gravy, and rolls. And then we have our list of things that we're to provide. I'll read that in a second. Uh, the list that we are being asked to shop for is next to this letter. In the back vestibule area on the table, there are these little half-sheet food lists. Um, we have uh, five-pound bags of potatoes, two cans of cranberry sauce, two cans of green beans, two cans of corn, bag of egg noodles, canned fruit, and boxed desserts. So that's the things that we're being asked to get. And um, we have 60 families that we're responsible for. Um, total, we're doing 120, but our church has 60. Therefore, we're trying to collect 60 of each item on the list. If you are able, please grab a list and shop for whatever you feel compelled to assist with that's on our list of things to get. And place them in the shopping cart. Uh, there's a grocery cart in the back vestibule area. You can bring your items in the next few weeks and put them in the shopping cart. All items must be returned no later than Wednesday, November 11th. If you have any questions or if you would prefer a contactless pickup or drop-off or would like to assist in the delivering of this food to CrossNet, please talk to Maria and her email and phone number is on this paper. And again, this paper will end up in the back area um, after today. So um, just wanted to share that opportunity with you and I appreciate everybody who helps with those things. There's already items back there. Uh, people were bringing it in this morning already. Um, so that is wonderful, and thank you for doing that. Um, I also wanted to share with you that uh, this morning, right after church, if you notice me peeling out of the parking lot <laughs> really fast, um, some of you know that I coach youth football, and we have a game today. Usually our games are at 5 o'clock Sunday afternoons or evenings. Today it's at 12 noon, and it's in Hempfield. So uh, if you see me getting out of here at the end of church and why I'm dressed like this, that's why. Uh, we have a football game today, and uh, maybe we can get these guys a win today. That would be wonderful. Uh, we talked about CrossNet. Oh, yesterday, wanted to share with you, the church family, yesterday we had uh, Chuck Berry's memorial service out here at the Grove, Weiler's Grove. It was a perfect day. Uh, it was a day just like this. It was The sun felt really great, but it was a cool fall morning, um, and it was a perfect setting out there outside at the Weiler's. Um, we had the full worship team, we had Tommy on drums and, and Billy on bass and Joe and these two ladies back here singing and Laquella on percussion and everyone did a wonderful job. Chuck's daughter actually gave the message yesterday. She did a wonderful job. Um, I really, really believe we honored him and um, he wanted a celebration. It was not to be a, a time of mourning and I think we did that. We, we played the songs that he wanted and we had a chicken barbecue to follow, and everything just went really, really well. But I would encourage you to continue to support his family and continue to, to um, be mindful of Donna. And I know that, it, you know, Chuck passed away in March, and sometimes, you know, we think, well, it's, it was a while ago. But, you know, when you get together with all this family and, and have a service like that, even though it's been a few months, it kind of brings a lot of those feelings back. And so we want to just continue to support her as her church family. Um, also, Corby Trago. Um, is uh, Tutti Jan's grandson. We want to lift him up. He was in a motorcycle accident. Uh, he's at Lancaster General. I know they had to put a, a rod in his femur. I don't know what all else had to go on, but they're hoping that he's going to get moved to rehab. But um, she had asked if we would please put him on our prayer list, uh, Corby Trago, recovering from a motorcycle accident. Am I forgetting anything, Joe? No. Would you remember if I was? Yeah. Was, were you saying something? What? what? No. All right. Uh, seeing as we have nothing else to discuss. Where are we? Mount Zion. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together this morning. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just take a moment to say thank you for this beautiful morning that we can gather here in this place. We thank you for the, the beauty of the changing seasons and the coolness of the air and the warmth of the sunshine and 
it's just truly hard to not appreciate your goodness when we are in a setting like this. God, we ask that this morning you would uh, be present here in this place as we worship you. Help us to, to be more mindful today than we normally are of the many blessings that you bestow upon us. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Your word tells us that, and we believe it. And so the things that we sometimes take for granted, even the, the small things, the things that make us smile, the things that bring us laughter, they're all a gift. The people that you put in our lives, the relationships we had, those that, that support us, those that make us joyful, and those that are there to cry with us when we need them, those people are all gifts. The ones that love us, and the ones that we love. We thank you for those wonderful gifts. Lord, we thank you for our freedoms. We thank you that we are not persecuted for our beliefs. We thank you that we can come here freely this morning and worship you, lift your name on high, read your word, and strive to grow in our personal walks with you. Lord, let that be true this morning, that as we sit here in this place for this hour, that we would be focused on one thing, and that would be you and the difference you make in our lives when we allow you to. Help us to be more willing to carry out the, the calling that you put on each of our lives, which is to go and save the lost and teach others what we have accepted for ourselves. Help us to do that. Let us bring a smile to your face this day as we sing songs about your goodness, about your love that's unconditional for us about the fact that because of you and what you've done, we are free from our sin. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And tomorrow may never be mine. 
receive. If you like to follow along, the scripture for today is probably the shortest scripture that I've ever chosen for a message, and that is one verse, Proverbs 17, 22, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But before we get to that, I want to talk about the heart, or joyful heart, is good medicine, and that's what we're talking about today. How can we find real joy, joy that's not circumstantial, joy that doesn't fluctuate with what's happening to us in this world, real solid joy, how can we find that and keep it in our hearts, because a joyful heart is good medicine. This past week, I came across an interesting story concerning a guy named Billy Bray. He was a rough old Cornish coal miner who had become a Christian during the 1905 Welsh Revival. After his conversion, Billy was so happy, so full of joy, that he was shouting praises almost all the time. Now, as you can imagine, though, that bothered people. And somebody said, Billy, why don't you just tone it down some? You're just too happy. You got too much joy all the time. Billy replied, I can't help it. God saved me, and I can't help it. When I put one foot down, it says, Hallelujah! And when I put the other foot down, it says, Glory to God! But Billy, suppose you're mistaken. Suppose when you die, you find out that you're not going to heaven, but you're going to hell. And old Billy said, Praise God! I've been having a wonderful time in the Lord ever since I gave my life to Him. Jesus has been good to me. And if I die and I go down to hell, then I'll be thankful for all the joy Jesus brought me into my life while I was here. I'll shout about it all over hell and they'll have to send me up to heaven because they can't stand that kind of joy down there. To be joy filled. You know, a basic point of a lot of the messages that I've given in the past is that for most people, their faith, what they've been taught, how we've been raised, what they believe, really makes all the difference in the way that we act and treat other people and live our lives. The values that we hold dear and the standards that we have that guide our lives. Now in the same vein, I may, may I suggest that our emotions have a profound effect upon the way that we feel and behave. Maybe King Solomon said it best when he wrote these words. And here's our scripture for the day. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Our emotions can do a lot of crazy things to our bodies. They can cause us to sweat, to weep, to tremble. Our emotions cause us to turn white with fear, red with embarrassment, purple with anger, green with nausea. Our emotions really do affect us physically. If you think about it, if you've ever dealt with really severe stress, you will know that when you're really stressed, your body can physically start to have issues like chest pains or stomach aches or whatever. Physically, we can be impacted by our emotions. So King Solomon was right. If you're joyful in your heart, then that is truly a good medicine because if you truly feel joy, it's going to affect the way you feel in other aspects of life. But if you're not joyful, if your spirit is broken... It dries up the bones and you become old and tired and wearisome and a person that not many people want to be around. In his book, A Widow on the Mountain, Winston Pierce tells of his high school class reunion. A group of old classmates <clears throat> were reminiscing about things and people for which they were grateful for. One man mentioned he was particularly thankful for a teacher, Mrs. Went. She taught English. For she more than anyone had introduced him to Tennyson and the beauty of poetry that he carried with him the rest of his life. Acting on a suggestion, he wrote this teacher a letter, a letter of appreciation. He addressed it to the high school and sent it, and eventually it was forwarded and found its way to the old teacher. About a month later, the man received a response. It was written in feeble longhand, and it read as follows. <clears throat> My dear Willie, I can't tell you how much your letter meant to me. I am now in my 90s, living alone in a small room, cooking my own meals, lonely, and like the last leaf of fall lingering behind. You will be interested to know that I taught school for 40 years, and yours is the first letter of appreciation I have ever received. It came on a blue, cold Monday, and it cheered me as nothing has for years. Willie, you have truly made my day. 
We need people that want to spread joy, that want to bring joy into people's lives. Think about it. Who are the people whom we're most attracted to? Gloomy Gus who walks around with a frown on his face. The person who sees all the bad things in the world, who is thoroughly convinced that everything is going to fall apart. <laughs> Casey's in the back as I'm describing this person. He's going. <laughs> is that the kind of person with whom we want to spend our time with or who we like to spend time with? I don't think so. We're attracted to the person who has a smile on their face, who has joy in their heart, and who wants to share it. We're attracted to the kind of people who want to send a letter to let somebody know that you're thinking of them and that they meant something to you in your life. Now, somebody might say this morning, well, all right, preacher, I hear you, but circumstances in my life have not been easy. They've not been that good. Things have been tough. Why should I have joy in my heart? Let me mention three reasons this morning. I believe that if you will take these reasons to heart and live with them daily, that it will make a world of difference in the way that you feel. The first one is this. We who are Christians have experienced a great deliverance. We should have joy in our hearts for no other reason than that right there. We have been delivered from our sin. The things that we've done that we're not proud of or that we should be punished for, Jesus took them away. We've been delivered. That in and of itself is an uncircumstantial joy that we should have. Nothing can take that away from us. The Bible teaches that while we were sinners, God loved us. While we were sinners, God sent his son to die on the cross for us. And it teaches that when we receive him into our hearts, when we confess him with our lips and with our lives, God forgives our sins and gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now I know that those words are familiar. That Hey, when we confess our sins and when we ask God into our heart, we're forgiven. We hear those words so much. I know they're familiar. My fear is that sometimes they might be so familiar that the ring of them and the wonder of what they mean doesn't have the impact that it once had on us and that it should have on us. Folks, we've been delivered. If that doesn't bring joy into your heart to know that you are forgiven and saved, then I don't know that I can say anything up here that will bring joy into your heart. In a Japanese seaside village over 100 years ago, there was an earthquake that startled the villagers late one on evening. Now, being accustomed to earthquakes, they soon went back to their activities and went about their lives without giving it another thought. An old farmer was watching from his home on a hill high above the village. He looked out on the ocean and he noticed that the water appeared dark and was acting strangely, moving against the wind and running away from the land. The old man knew what this meant. Today, we would call this a tsunami. His one thought was to warn the people in the village below. He called to his grandson, bring me a torch, hurry. In the fields behind him lay his great crop of rice that was piled high in stacks, ready for the market. It was worth a fortune to this farmer. The old man hurried out to the stacks with his torch, and in a flash, the dry stalks were set ablaze. Soon, the big bell pealed from the temple below, fire, fire. Back from the beach, away from the shore, up, to the steep, up the steep side of the cliff came the people of the village, running as fast as they could. They were coming to try to save the crops of their neighbor and put out the fire. He's mad, they said, when they saw that he just stood there, watching them come and staring out into the ocean. As they reached his level, the old man shouted at the top of his voice while pointing toward the water, Look! At the edge of the horizon, they saw a long, thin, and faint line a line that grew thicker as they watched. That line was the ocean, rising like a wall, getting higher and coming more and more swiftly as they stared. <clears throat> they, then came the shock, heavier than thunder. The great wall of water struck the shore with a fierceness and a force that sent a shudder through the hill and tore the homes below into matchsticks. The water withdrew with a roaring sound, and then it returned and struck the village again and again and again. One final time it struck and ebbed, then it returned to its place and its pattern in the ocean. On the hill, no one spoke a word for a long time. Finally, the voice of the old man could be heard saying softly and gently, that's why I set the fire to my rice. He now stood among them just as poor as the poorest of them all. His wealth was gone, all for the sake of 400 lives. By that sacrifice, he will long be remembered, not by his wealth. 
He was not saddened by what his sacrifice cost him. He was overjoyed at what was saved. It is that same spirit that Jesus had for each of us when he prayed to God in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will but yours be done, whatever needs to be done so that we might save. And he surrendered himself into the hands of those who were determined to crucify him, all because of his love for each of us. Jesus was willing to go. He wasn't concerned about what it was going to cost him. He was overjoyed at what he was going to save. We have been delivered. God's word says that when Jesus is our Lord and Savior, then we have been delivered from the bondage of our sin, and we have the gift of everlasting life. That is reason number one why we should have joy in our hearts this morning. A joyful heart is good medicine. We have been delivered. <clears throat> there is a second element that brings joy into our hearts, and that is trust. We trust God, or at least we can and should trust God. Every married person here knows it's very difficult for a marriage to survive unless there is trust between husband and wives. Any true friendship knows that a real friendship requires trust. Where trust prevails, then peace and harmony can also prevail. In the same way, our Christian life can be meaningful and a more meaningful experience when we learn what it means to trust God to take care of the things in life. Jesus has a word that he used over and over again. The Greek language uh, pronounces it as tharse. It means cheer up, or it's often translated to say, be courageous, take heart, or don't be afraid. In all the storms of life, we can hear the voice of Jesus saying, if we listen, take heart, don't be afraid. On the last night in the upper room when he was telling the disciples once again that he's going to have to leave them and he's going to be killed. They just couldn't accept it. So Jesus spoke these words to him in John 16, 33. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus never said, he never sugarcoated, hey, if you accept me and you follow me and you pick up your cross and you, and you carry it and come with me and you become one of mine, you're going to have it easy. It's going to be all made. That's not what he said. He's telling his closest followers right here, you will have trouble. Not you might have trouble or some of you might. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I've overcome this world. And if we're followers of Jesus, we will overcome this world someday too. You and I have very limited control over the circumstances that come our way. We are not sure what the next few weeks, months, or years will bring to our homes and our families. Look at what happened to our, our, our homes and families in our country in just a matter of weeks when this pandemic hit. It turned everything upside down. We sometimes don't have control over our circumstances, and we don't know what the future holds. Maybe some of the bad things that we worry about and we fear about will come to pass. But there is that trust, that sacred bond, which brings strength to our life if we learn to trust God in all circumstances. And there is the voice of Jesus saying, hey, cheer up, because a joyful heart is good medicine. And you don't have to worry about what this world throws at you, because I have overcome this world. And someday when we leave this world and go to the next, we will be overcomers as well. John Williams wrote, my mother Cecilia wrote a poem about being thankful that I've always treasured. She died in 1984. I thank God for every memory and every valuable lesson that she taught me about life. Her poem went like this. Talk about being joyful in all circumstances. Thank God for dirty dishes. They have a tale to tell. While other folks go hungry, we're eating very well. With home and health and happiness, we should not want to fuss. For by this stack of evidence, God is very good to us. Thank God for dirty dishes. We need to be joyful because we've been delivered. We can trust our God. And the third reason is this. We have a great task to perform. We should find joy in the calling that God has placed on our lives. Most people who deal with others realize that the best medicine that can be given to a person who is down or dealing with stress or anxiety can be to give that person something to do. Unless you're me, then you're down because you have too much to do, but nah, I'm just kidding. But 
That is the thing that we need to do is sometimes we find that when somebody is down or even when we're feeling down and we have a friend who asks for help, maybe we don't even feel like helping, but when we decide to do it, we stop thinking so much about what's got us down because now we're focused on helping somebody else that we care about. We have a job to do. The bigger the job, the better. Because the more involved we are in performing a task, especially in helping someone else, the more apt we are to forget our own problems and be healed of that which is causing us distress. Do you want a task to perform? Because we have one. The task of carrying the gospel around the world. God gave that task to us almost 2,000 years ago, and it continues today. We haven't completed the task. Think about it. There are still lost people. Friends, neighbors, relatives, people who do not know Jesus Christ. God has said, here is your task. Let them know that Jesus is Lord, that he is King of Kings, and that he loves them and that he died for them. That's what we're supposed to be doing for the rest of the world. There's an old legend about when Jesus ascended back to heaven after he was crucified and rose and then he ascended when he arrived, the angel Gabriel came up and asked him, Lord, how did it go? And Jesus answered, it went well. I accomplished what I went to do. I went to the cross and I died for their sins. Gabriel then asked, but do the people appreciate what you did? Do they even really know? Jesus answered, well, some of them do. Peter, James, John, and a few others. Then Gabriel asked, but what about the rest of the world? Jesus said, they will know too. Here's my plan. I plan for Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, and the rest to tell others what I've done. When those people hear about it, then they will each want to tell somebody else. And in turn, when those people hear about it, they'll tell somebody else until the whole world knows what I did. Then Gabriel, knowing the weaknesses of humankind, asked, But what if they fail? What if Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, what if they don't tell anybody? Or what if those people don't tell somebody else? What if they forget the message? What if they become indifferent and complacent? What other plan do you have? Jesus looked at Gabriel and said, Gabriel, I have no other plan. Yes, that is still his plan for me to tell somebody, for you to tell somebody. And then for the two of us to find two more and tell them. And then the four of us to find four more and tell them. And then the eight of us to find eight more. There is no other plan. So we can have joy in our heart because we have a job to do. A job that should bring us joy. Because it should excite you to tell other people what it has meant for you to know that I am delivered and I have a God who loves me that I can trust in all circumstances. No matter what this world throws at me, God is in control of the world. So we have a job. And when you're doing it, our hearts should be filled with joy that the world will never understand the kind of joy that we have because we have been delivered and saved. I pray this morning that we will turn our lives more over to him than we already have. That's why we come every Sunday, right? Because we, we don't have it all figured out. We're not perfect. We need to continue to grow. And I pray that you'll ask God to give you the strength and the tools that you need to learn to trust him more. To learn to find joy in all circumstances because of the simple fact that God loved you so much that he pulled you out of darkness and said, you're mine and nothing can take you away from me. That gives me joy that this world can't take from me. Be filled with joy this week because a joyful heart is really good medicine. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we once again just thank you for the opportunity that you give us each and every day to get up and make a decision that we're going to serve you. Your word tells us that we are to love you with all of our hearts, minds, soul, everything that we have, we're to try to love you with. And so... Help us to do that better each and every day. Help us to grow. Help us to be filled with joy in a, in a world and in a time where there's a lot of anger, depression, anxiety, hatred, division. 
Help us to find joy. Because no matter what's happening in our world, nothing gets between our personal relationship with you. Nothing takes away the fact that you loved us so much you sent your son to die for us so that we could be forgiven of our sin, so that we could spend eternity with you one day in heaven when we overcome this world. Lord, you've called us to be overcomers. Help us to not be afraid of what lies ahead, not to worry about what lies ahead. Help us to trust you. You're the God who saves. You're for us. What could be against us? So we ask that you empower us to truly believe and trust in your promises. Lord, we love you because you loved us first and sent Jesus to save us. It's in his name that we pray together this morning. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Keith. Great to see everyone today. You know, many of us are gripped by anxieties, fears, and that's hard when you're suffering with that to have joy. And this song talks about that right now. And let's stand and sing, No Longer Slaves. You unravel me with a melody. You surround deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Sing it out. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Who oh, I am a child of God. I'm no
I hope you're glad that you got up and came and worshiped together this morning here. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God, God is, is good. good. Have joy this week and this month and this year. Despite whatever comes our way, pandemics or whatever happens, find joy in your heart. Not because of conditional things like what we currently have or, or what we're restricted to. Have joy because you've been saved. You've been delivered. Nothing can take that away from you. That should bring us joy. And we have a God who is big enough and strong enough to overcome this whole world, and he loves you, and you can trust him. And lastly, find joy in the job that we have set before us. we got a job to do. Let's do it with joy in our hearts. Thank you for being here this morning to worship. You are dismissed. And